That's what she does every day. So she can never let go of that because she's going down in her uh, voter level. So those are the three reasons why once a woman is married, she can never uncover her hair ever again. And it doesn't matter if she remains married, she gets divorced, or the husband dies. It really doesn't matter. She's done with the aspect of her life of uncovered hair. That's saved for the virgins. I hope that was interesting to everybody. I hope I answered your question, Yaakov. How, how was that segment? Good. Good. You think that'll make a highlight tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you go into your thing. <sighs> Woo! This week's Torah portion is Vayera, Exodus chapter 6, the end of Exodus chapter 9. Okay. So it's good to get along with people, but sometimes doing the right thing puts you on the out with almost everyone, as in the example of Moses in this week's Torah portion. He tries to do what God wants, and he gets the Pharaoh mad at him, he gets the Jews mad at him, and it seems like the whole world's mad at him. So Moses faces a crisis of faith at the onset of this week's Torah portion. Apparently he's made no headway and little impression on the Pharaoh of Egypt. The situation of Jewish slaves has worsened. The leaders of the people place their blame upon Moses. So Moses unsuccessful with the Pharaoh and with the Jews. It's any wonder that Moses complains to God about the mission, which he now wants to abandon. So Moses pretty obviously is disappointed with God. So Have you ever been like that? I don't really have a vibrant relationship with God, so I don't think I ever... like. Well, how would you describe your relationship with God? Um, distant to the point of almost no relationship. You think you have no relationship with God? Yeah. That's very sad. Occasionally I, I feel the divine presence in a relationship, but very rarely. Do you feel like you have a relationship with God? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Do you talk to God? And... Yeah. Who do you talk to when you daven at, at 6 in the morning? Um, well, there's Shmuel, and there's Levy, and... I don't know what you're talking about. Just guys at Minion? No, but who do you talk to while you're davening? Who are you directing your prayers to? The Rebbe? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm directing them to God, but it's very distant. It's... You're like faxing them in. Yeah, I'm just kind of emailing them in. You're kind of sending them emails, but yeah, they don't... Yeah. They never get an answer, yeah, it's answer. just like goes in the bitch bucket. Yeah. I see. See, I know God's listening to me, mm -hmm. but then he just like tunes me out the same way you do. Mm -hmm. Here's a conversation. Let's, let's do a, a, a just a uh, role play, a little mm -hmm. dramatization, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. folks, mm -hmm. of me talking to God. Okay. Okay? So... I'll just be myself. You just you, be yourself. You, you be like himself. Tebow, yeah, yeah. and I'll be going like, God, you got to help me out. I, you know, uh, I've never been married. i got to get married already. Make that happen. Uh, I don't have a penny in my name. I don't have... Uh, I, don't, I can't even take a piss. The only people I can... You know, I don't even have a pot to piss, and I have to piss on the dead bodies of Taliban people. Uh, I don't have any money. You know, I, I've jacked up all my credit cards. Man, that sucks for you. <laughs> <laughs> and God's like, you know, jerking off, looking at chat rooms. <laughs> He's like, you know, doing a t do a Tebow, God, go for it, you know. Mm -hmm. This is me talking to God, right? So I'm like waiting all year, like every day. Help me out, God. Help me out, you know. You know, send me a sign. And like, he sends me Justin. Hey, Justin, how's it going? <laughs> um... I'm not going to name names, but someone called me quite high on Mercy Shelvers and said, Hey, do you like to get high? What? Someone called me Mercy Shelvers and said, Do you like to get high? Certain American Jewish University student, I'm not going to name any names. Oh, he, he said that? <laughs> do you like to get high? It's like He called you on the phone? And said, Do you like to get high? <laughs> do I like to get high? I don't do drugs. <laughs> I never do drugs. <laughs> Like, I've never tried marijuana in my life. I am like Nancy Reagan when it comes to drugs. Just say no. Do I like to get high? Boy, that chat room, ten people in there, they have a minion. And two guests as well. So. And two people watching that don't know how to lo 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 log in. Okay, so, so this is how I talk. This is my relationship with God. So I keep talking and talking and going. And then I get really mad and threatening. Mm -hmm. I go, that's it. You know, if you don't solve my problems, I'm done. I swear, I'm done. I am done, I'm going to pull the plug and kill myself, and it's not going to help you at all, because you want all these things from me, you know, and you've given me all these talents, but I'm not going to use them, I'm just going to go fuck myself, and you can go fuck off, and that's it, and then what does God say to that? He starts talking about the chat room. Well, it sounds like you're <laughs> feeling a lot of anger and pain. 
<laughs> I don't even get that from him. I don't even. I don't even. I, I don't even get that from. I instead I get like go to your TiVo. Go to your, that's what God does in this. So that's my relationship with God. So I'm very close with him because we talk all the time. But nothing ever happens. So I don't get. You know, it's like I learned like he doesn't give a shit. So what am I supposed to do? So some say love, it is a river. Hey, wait a minute. I want to say something about my friend Lauren. The tender read. Lauren is a guy, folks. Be nice. He's not... Yeah, he's Lauren. in the men's section. Yeah. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Okay. Some say love, it is a hunger, an endless aching need. I say love, it is a flower, and you, it's only seed. Did you write that? No. It's gay. <laughs> it's Bette Midler. <laughs> Okay. So, the Lord appears to Moshe at the beginning. Oh, what do you say, love? Do you think it's a river, a tender reed, a razor, a hunger, an endless aching need, or a flower? In you, it's only seed. I, I, I... Love? Yeah. Is it the heart afraid of breaking that never learns to dance? It's the dream afraid of waking that never takes the chance? It's the one who won't be taken, who cannot seem to give, and the soul afraid of dying that never learns to live. Yeah, that's what it is. Some say love, it is a flower, and you, it's only seed. Okay, the Lord appears to Moshe at the beginning of this week's Torah portion with a recounting of his relationship with the fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if the Lord ever appeared to anyone after my time and recounts his relationship with me, it will be a very short recounting. In fact, it might get something like this. And the Lord appeared to Rabbi Cohen. I am the Lord of Levi ben Abraham, said the Lord. The infamous blogger asked Rabbi Cohen, his neck tightening, stiffening, and compressing. Yes, one and the same, said the Lord God of Israel. What sorrow awaited your moral leader, the rod of my anger. I used his blog as a club. To express my anger at the Jews. I sent him against a godless nation, against a people with whom I was angry. Levi would plunder them, trampling them like dirt beneath his feet. But Levi would not understand that he was my tool. His mind did not work that way. His plan was simply to destroy, cut down rabbi after rabbi. He would say, each of my bitches will soon be a hoe. After the Lord had used the moral leader blog to accomplish his purposes on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, he turned against Levi ben Abraham and punished him, for Levi was proud and arrogant. Levi boasted, by my own powerful arm I have done this. But can the axe boast greater power than the person who uses it? Therefore the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, will send a virus amongst Levi's proud blogs, and a flaming fire in the genital region will consume his glory. I remember reading that. That's in the book of Luke. It's a little adaptation of Isaiah. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Exodus uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 9. So, Moses spoke accordingly to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of shortness of breath and hard work. So, why did the children of Israel have shortness of breath? Because they were tightening and compressing their necks. When you tip the head back, tighten and compress the neck, you'll notice here as I tip my head back that my voice quality is changing. I have to kind of gasp for air. Now, if they'd only free their necks of unnecessary tension and compression and think up, allowing the back to lengthen and to widen, their lungs would have more room to expand, they breathe more easily. But no, the Israelites then as now insisted on stiffening their necks and not coming to me for Alexander Technique lessons. I think this is the most important part of this entire show. That should be your highlight clip, and I'll tell you why. Okay. You are showing, right? Mm-hmm. The Torah has a source for why Alexander is needed. God put that in there for you. That's your source, lady. Wow. You need to go to the shuls and explain to them. Right, right. About the stiff neck business, about the compression, the shortness of the breath, and you're going to explain that and go and lead into your Alexander. You need to go back to that Bina thing. You need to get up on that stage yeah. and talk for 15 minutes. But instead of talking about all your nourish kite with your sex addiction bullshit, right, right. you need to get up there and you need to talk about the stiffness of the neck and all this. And show them that there's a makor in the Torah for the Alexander. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You're, yeah. You're a smart guy. In many ways, I am greater than Moses. For example, in Exodus chapter 6, verse 12, Moses tells God, I am a man of sealed lips. I ain't never been accused of having sealed lips. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. If they asked Moses, who's the greater man? Mm -hmm. Moses or you? Mm -hmm. He would say you. Mm -hmm. So would I. Right? And we don't learn who's the greater man from that. You know what we learn? No. Moses was considered the most humble man in the history right. of the universe. 